this is so cool. What's up, P Nation? Today we are in Warsaw, Poland. The weather is beautiful and we are ready to see the city. So today we are going to a traditional milk bar and then we're going to the Royal Castle. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited to discover the history of this Phoenix. But first, we gotta get on our favorite mode of transportation, the, the tram. tram. restaurants to feed the laborers of the community. So they would come here to have really like fortified, nutritious, really good meals between their lunch breaks and it would, you know, like keep keep everyone going. But it's called a milk bar because after the war there wasn't a lot of meat. So everybody was pretty much using dairy products to like enrich and nourish their meals. So a lot of dairy was used and that's why it's called a milk bar. First up on the menu is borscht with dumplings. Now borscht looks almost evil. It is super red beet soup. I have never had beet soup before. I'm pretty excited. I like beets. I think beets taste like dirt, but they're also kind of sweet. So let's see what this tastes like. I'm also very nervous because I decided to wear white today. Wow. If you like beets, you'll definitely like this. It's sweet, it's salty, it has that earthy beet flavor. It's a very hard, you know, like taste to explain other than it tastes honestly like beets. And it comes with these dumplings. You have to order it forged with dumplings. And thankfully I did enough research where I knew to do that. like a meat inside the dumpling. That is so good. It's kind of like it adds more pepper taste to the borscht. And the dumpling is so good. Whoa. I was not expecting to like this. Okay. So now we're trying tomato soup with dumplings. It tastes just like SpaghettiOs, the canned pasta back in America. That's really weird because I had a dream about that the other day. I don't know why. Maybe that was foreshadowing this event right now. It's really good. Bring back childhood memories. Okay, so a lot of people are bringing in a bunch of like to-go containers and their own different ways to take it home and like huge bags of things. And they just told me it's actually cheaper to get a bunch of stuff here and take it home for the week than it would be to actually cook for yourself and buy things at the grocery store. That is crazy. I wish we had these at home because I would totally do that. When I think of like Polish food, I think of pierogies and I think of like fried pork, you know, or like fried things, like cuts of meat. So this is a pork cutlet. So good. Can't go wrong with pork. Pork cutlet. Or it being fried. So now, moving right along, we ordered a pancake with cottage cheese and cheese. If this isn't the breakfast of champions, I don't know what it is, but it's going to make a great dessert for lunch. It's more of like a crepe instead of a cake. It's got cottage cheese on the inside, coated in butter, and sugar. It is so good. So the cottage cheese is more like, we think, to be like a ricotta, but it's really, really sweet. And it's really tangy. Okay, now time for the sweet pierogies. I've only had savory ones up to this point. Whoa. 
Yeah, there's a lot of sugar. Number one is sugary, number two there's crystallized sugar also on it. And then there's, it's in this like butter sauce, and the cheese is super sweet. Unlike the cheese on the pancake, it's very sweet. The consistency is like a dumpling with cream cheese inside. We just filled our tummies with some great Polish food. The thing I like the most about Polish food is really, it's not trying to be fancy. You know, it's just like simple flavors that just mix really well together and they remind you of your mom's cooking, your grandma's cooking. And honestly, there are probably 10 grandmas in that kitchen right now cooking up great Polish food for Warsaw. Now we are going to go check out the Presidential Palace. Whew, we are so full, we just walked like five minutes to the bus station and Leah said that here they have trackers on the buses so they know exactly where they are. Yeah, Google Maps is awesome. Okay, we just got off the bus and we have made it to the old town or the new old town because Warsaw was destroyed like four times within six years. Anyways, it's the Phoenix City, so it has been rebuilt and it's really nice down here. It's awesome. There's so many people. It probably helps that we're here on Sunday. Oh yeah, the locals are like canning and these chairs everywhere. Music. Ice cream. It's beautiful. through the old town and now we're about to enter the royal palace that's what it's called yep, oh. yep. and thought, although it was burned down and destroyed mm -hmm. they made a new one to match its exact replication unfortunately it is closed today well close to us i guess close to us we thought it was free on sunday and that's why we were coming here there like three blog posts that said that it was free but oh well yeah. we're budget travelers so yeah the old town's free to walk around so that's what we're gonna do yeah is really interesting because it's so new but it looks so old yeah I don't know if you could really even tell if you didn't know that it wasn't I wouldn't old. be able to tell had we not gone to the rising museum yesterday seriously like this place looks authentic okay so the old town was pretty sweet but we're after something even sweeter We made it back downtown. We we're about to try some chocolate that Leah said was supposed to be really good. Yes, so there is a chocolate factory that was founded here in Warsaw by the Weddles. So it's, I think it's called E. Weddle, e -Weddle. Chocolate Factory and we're going to a chocolate store. So really it's more like a chocolate cafe. So we're going. This is so much fun. I have never been in a chocolate lounge before and I've never been in a famous one either. So this brand, E. Weddle, has been like in this location for 160 years or something. It is like the most well-known chocolate factory in all of Poland, and it's located here in Warsaw. So we ordered, it's like cold chocolate, with a scoop of vanilla, and then we got hot chocolate, but it's not like your normal hot chocolate. It's like super thick, like actual, like just melted chocolate with a little bit of milk. So it's super dense, and that's like the most famous thing you can get here. So we got a chocolate trio so we can try all the different flavors. So this one's the cold chocolate with vanilla ice cream, and it's like a really dark chocolate. And you can definitely tell it's like very bitter, but the vanilla ice cream makes it sweet, and it's just so good. I love chocolate. 
So think of the thickest chocolate milk you've ever had and then quadruple that. This is the thickest, but basically chocolate milk. It's just chocolate and milk and it's cold and it has a little bit of vanilla in there. It's really good. So on to the hot chocolate. I've never had white hot chocolate before. I didn't even think that was a thing, but let's try. It tastes like white chocolate. <laughs> Now it's time for the bitter hot chocolate or the dark chocolate. It's probably gonna be my favorite. Oh, it definitely is. You just have to like develop this taste, and I don't like coffee, and so a lot of people associate dark chocolate with the taste of coffee, but they're kind of different. So I don't like coffee, but I love dark chocolate. It's my favorite type of chocolate, and it tastes just like super dark chocolate. Okay, so we tried the white chocolate and the dark chocolate or the bitter chocolate, and now this is the milk chocolate. Ah. This is my favorite. The bitter is too bitter for me. The white chocolate is really sweet. It kind of reminds me of like candy coating. It's really, really, really sweet, but this is perfect. Right in the middle. I'm all chocolated out. That was amazing. <laughs> if I ever find another chocolate bar, I am definitely going to. I've never been to one, and that was awesome. Okay, and now since we are close to it, we are going to look at some Soviet time period architecture, I think that's how you say it, and find out what this whole, there's the thing called a wedding cake here, and I don't really know what it's for, so we're gonna go find out what that is. Okay, so we have made it. So behind me is the Palace of Science and Culture, originally deemed as the Stalin's Palace of Science and Culture. And Joseph Stalin built this building in the 50s. The Polish people weren't too happy about it then, and they still aren't now. There were several, several referendums to get this thing torn down in 2009 and 10, but they didn't pass because they said it would just cost too much money. And some people say it's a symbol of Warsaw rising from the past post-war ashes. So you tell us what you think. I think it's pretty cool, but if I lived here and it was built by people that I didn't think were cool, then maybe I wouldn't like it. I don't know. This is so weird. This is like our third floor to be on and everything is just abandoned. I can see why the government's like, we need to tear it down because yeah. nothing's happening with it. But it's crazy to walk into a building this big by yourself. This has been a very great day. We have had some awesome Polish food, great hot chocolate. Great architecture, <laughs> yeah. It was interesting to see everything that's been rebuilt after the post-war era. It's been amazing. What's up, P-Nation? Today we are in Warsaw, and it's gonna be in... <laughs> okay, so think of the thickest milk from one baker slash confectioner to another. I almost went to culinary school, like no joke, and I dropped out of high school, and I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.